Well, we can't find anything that's not, that, that has never been lost. Welcome to part two of Nori Okushi, who talks about using what you already have to awaken to your most genuine self. And I just uh, said, well, we all have everything we could ever want. It's nothing, nothing ever missing. The only thing that keeps us, prevents us from re recognizing that is who you think you are. Knowing now exactly who he is, Norio says it is not from any kind of study, book learning, or spiritual belief system, but rather from direct personal experience. When his awakening or epiphanies first occurred to him in 2004 and 5, he kept them mostly to himself, though eventually he chose to begin sharing them for the benefit of others. See, the cosmic joke is also that we never left the Garden of Eden. You know, we're still there. It's just, you know, it's just through our, through our interpreting what's unfolding, we, we miss that. When it's seen what our true being is, we can know the entire history of human humanity and, every, you know, everything so is, in, is already there within each of us. In this interview, Norio is asked very directly by one of his admirers, who are you? <laughs> I say that's a trick question. Because <laughs> we're not a thing. It can't, it's a question that can't be answered. <laughs> and Norio's directives about how better to achieve greater peace, love, and bliss. So on, on one level to say, what should you do? What should someone do? The simple answer is, well, you're already doing it. <laughs> Our two-part Sojourn series with Norio Kushi concludes now, with Norio commenting further on his own awakening. He also takes questions from followers who are in the midst of their own deep spiritual inquiry. Welcome to Sojourns. This interview was recorded on June 14, 2020. I promised at the outset that we had some questions from people who admire you and people who know you, and I'm just going to begin with a question from... Uh, Rosemary from Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, she's in one of our groups that uh, you're aware of. She says she would like to know how you personally perceive or think of the divine and what part did this play in your awakening? Not raised um, Christian or in any of the major religions, you probably never thought of the divine being this old man with a beautiful gray flowing beard sitting on a cloud somewhere. I, I was well aware of that image that you described about a guy with a beard. And, and that's one of the things that, why spirituality or religion never interested me. It didn't, it didn't fit with the way I saw the world. Now I have no problem with the word divinity or divine or, or God. Um, however, I recognize that there's many interpretations of that word. Yeah. And, and so I understand that's uh, Rosemary's question. Um, so th the word that I st initially used was infinite. And eventually I started including words like divine, divinity, or in God, because uh, to me it's the same thing. The thing is that um, God is not a thing. In order for the cognitive conceptual mind to grasp the idea of God, it has to be made into a thing. But what the infinite and God is, is something before the image making, before the capacity for ideas, concept, before the feeling, before, before even light, before vibration, you know, it is, it is the creator. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, it's there, and the, what we don't see is that the creator and creation, there is not two, two separate things. There isn't a, something that is creating. All there is is creation. So yeah. God is creation. And and we are and 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 the energy and 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 the vibration as it moves is the is the is becomes the languaging. First there's the infinite and then there's vibr it starts vibrating. And and that's the and so, so when when it's said that in the beginning was the word, it's through languaging that beginning time, which implies time, is created through languaging. Mm -hmm. 
you know, with that prior to, so there's something prior to languaging, which is the infinite or God. And, but it's not a thing. It, it is the creation, creation and creator. It's, it's the same thing. But because it, it, it's, but to describe it, we turn it into a thing, you know, it's, but it's pre, pre-description prior to any, any of that. So, so it, so it can be seen, but it's, but it can't, it's not seen outside of you. It's seen within. Um, and, and it's known within. It's not out there. It's, so, so the inquiry, what does it mean to be human, just kind of brought me, well, once that, there was a scene that there was no me, then the continued inquiry just brought me more, more and more into the center of, of being. Mm-hmm. Everything is just that. Everything is just, and it's also unconditional love. You know, it's like, that's all there is. And then it takes on many forms infinite patterns. It looks like a tree. It looks like a rock. It looks like Trump. It looks like whoever, you know, it looks, it's all, it's all (laughs) appears in different ways. Because we're caught up in this separate self-identity, that's the human dilemma, as I had shared with you, that we don't know what we are and we don't know that we don't know. (laughs) So, and, uh, and, and meaning that, and so none of us, once caught up in this, we don't recognize our core div- divinity and the core divinity of, of uh, all manifestation. And, and the, the saying that um, made in the image of God refers to the fact that human beings also language. We're, we're the only animal that has the layer of con- conceptual, conceptualization and languaging. It, which is an important part, aspect of of being human that that's th- distinguishes this the human form from other forms and uh so made in the image of god refers to the fact that human beings also language and and all of creation is languaging mm-hmm. so so we as humans have have the ability for creating um, however however that's not we're not in touch with that capacity. Yeah. And we, we think of creativity like art and everything. And yes, that's an expression of our, of our being, mm-hmm. but, it's, but, it's, but there's, a, there's a capacity for humanity to create in a way that we, have no, we haven't yet touched upon. We, we do not know, we, don't, do not, we do not see that the reality where which we live, which I call the linear time-based reality, is in itself a creation, and we as humans are are actively creating that reality ongoingly, and and with the separate self identity and all that, and this and and that this reality ultimately ends up in in conflict and war because the self identity itself is a disturbance, and so and. So we don't see that we're, this is something we're ongoingly creating. Uh, so, so in the same way, there's a possibility of creating any kind of world. Like I said, like I shared with you um, in the email, see the cosmic joke is also that we never left the Garden of Eden. You know, we're still there. It's just, you know, it's just through our, through our interpreting what's unfolding, we, we miss that. Let's go to another question. This is from Candace, whom you don't know. She's a friend of ours from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. She wonders how alone you feel in the world, knowing what you now know, that many of us don't, especially when others may not understand you or your insights that you've gained through this awareness. How alone are you? Uh, I never feel alone. The idea of being alone that never occurs to me anymore. How easy is it for you to relate to other people or put it the other way around for them to relate to you? Oh, very easy. Very easy. I feel comfortable with anyone. It's, you know, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's basically I just recognize everyone is expression of divinity.
Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I recognize that not everyone might see that, but I see it and I, that's all that matters. <laughs> I got another question here. This comes from, this comes from a friend, Dan. Daniel, you may know him by here in San Diego. He says he would like to echo to you what Ramana Maharshi's favorite question is to people standing before him. Who are you? So his question would be to you, Norio, is who are you? <laughs> I say that's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question to keep the keep this. Uh, phantom self been going for years because <laughs> we're not a thing. It can't, it's a question that can't be answered. <laughs> well, because uh, the question implies that I am a I am a thing. Who are you? As uh, um, I mean, if I were to meet someone at a party, you know, and they ask me that question, I might uh, question it. Them, oh, in what context do you mean? What do I do for work or what? You know, so in this game, game of Monopoly, I can answer, I can answer that question. You know, that, oh, okay, uh, I'm the car. <laughs> you know, I drive a truck. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, in that way, uh, in that way, there, you know, it's a valid question that, that, that can be answered. <laughs> but the the to answer the but the ultimate question of who am I, you know, or who are you, um, is yeah, is is one of those uh, co koan or is, it's a question oh, that yeah. has no answer. <laughs> well, here's one you can't answer. I think it's from Candace again, our friend in Florida. Uh, she wants to know if your awakening, or call it what you will, self-realization was accompanied by a significant physical sensation. Now, you mentioned, I'm pretty sure, something about a shock taking place or a jolt to your nervous system. Is that something you can expect continuing to happen, or is that a one-time only deal? The question that I, that I asked, uh, what does it mean to be human, um, I... I continue to live in that space of questioning. Uh, what does it mean to be human? It wasn't unpleasant at all. The shock, or this, it's 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 more it's more of the feel sensation of getting a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turns out I'm the bad joke. <laughs> okay. We've seen that um, reaction to. Uh, it's called that reaction of getting the joke. It's called the laughing Buddha. We've seen people begin to laugh and can't stop uh -huh. when they get it. Okay, my question: It would be helpful to all of us if you could articulate, um, and I'm sure you know what happens after death. After the death <laughs> of the body, the seeming mind body. Uh -huh. Well. Um... The bad news is that everything you think you are, which only is only an idea, dies with the body. It doesn't reincarnate or anything like that. <laughs> so, so that's the bad news. <laughs> the, the good news is that there is no death. <laughs> so that infinity which we are, the, the mind, the seeming mind body falls away, and that infinity which we are just continues as it always was. Yeah, it's, it's timeless. It doesn't, you know, time exists out of that, the infinite. So the, the birth and death is, is a play of within the timelessness and, that, and, and the infinite. And that's, that's our core, core nature of everything. And, and one of the things I saw is, is that, oh my God, I never knew what love was. You know, when, when I saw that, I finally saw, got what love, true love is. It's unconditional. There's no judging, there's no, it, it's like, it has no preference in, in, 
in how the world is showing up. It, you know, it's, it, it, and, and, and that is the infinite, is the space of, that's the timelessness and all. So, um, so as horrible as things in, are on the planet, the way we treat each other and everything, and, and uh, um, as horrific as that is, the infinite, it, you know, is just loves it all in, unconditionally. Prior to that, everything I thought was love was always conditional. It was relative, mm -hmm. and there's, and we we make rules about what what you're going to behave like. If I love you, I'm going to behave this way. You're going to, if you love me, you're going to behave this way. You know, it's, it's you know, it's it's, it's uh, you know, you know that the. the, the what I thought was love at, at, the, at most is, is, a, is like a deep affection for someone, but love is not that either. And lo love doesn't ask anything and it, it doesn't show up in any way. It's not attached to what it looks, what it looks like. So once, once it was seen by the Norio, this cosmic joke, what I call the cosmic joke, that I don't exist, that I, I had no, I have no question in my mind that it could be shared with others. And and there's this this uh, kind of a childish, joyish way that I wanted to share this in this cosmic joke that hey, <laughs> we already have everything we could ever want. You know, it's like <laughs> I thought it would be, you know, so so. So, so now the so now the main question for me um, is has been how do I how do how do how does one do that? You know, after after speaking to you know many people, thousands of people, um, I'm, I'm still look I'm still playing with that. I'm I'm still playing with that. You know, and and yet I'm convinced that it can be shared. Because it's something we all already are. Yeah, we already are that, and I know that that doesn't necessarily make it easy for someone to see that no, when I say we'll be, that. But we'll be waiting in bated breath, with bated breath, for you to reveal <laughs> your plan of reasoning about how others might be able to find what they already have. That's the big question in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, number one. Um, there are no mistakes. That's only in the game of Monopoly. Um, so um, I can assure everyone absolutely that they've never done a thing wrong in their life. Um, and I think that's I think that's what forgiveness really is: is to see that one has never done a, done anything wrong in their life. And without a without a doubt, and um, and and you can never do anything wrong in your life. So what you're doing, what one is engaged in, is in a sense you can say it's perfect. Um, <laughs> so 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 on on one level to say. What should you do? What should someone do? The simple answer is, well, you're already doing it. <laughs> so, you know, the joke is that there is no doer. You know, it's it's. The, if we imagine the infinite, which is beyond imagination, of course, but there's there's something out of which all of life and all of everything is arising. So, so it's we have our attention on just what is of what's arising, and we're interpreting what's arising, which is it. We're using our primary, our primarily our thought process, and the thought process is just an aspect of our being. It's it's not the totality of our being, and uh, and 
and the seeing of our true nature, our fundamental, our core being, is not something that can be reached intellectually, cognitively. So, um, so yeah, it's a it's a dilemma. <laughs> How, how to share it and uh, um, and and yet it can be shared and and I think there are probably people who might even be able to share it better than I can you know I like to listen to other people see what they have to say see see if they have a <laughs> I'm always curious what people have to say if there's something I can plagiarize and <laughs> shed more light on this. <laughs> um, Norio, uh, the concept of I'm not the doer is something I've heard for decades. It's never clicked, it's never clicked for me because I can't figure out if, if I don't chop wooden carry, <laughs> carry the water, who will? If, yeah, yeah. if this body doesn't do it. Well, the body, the body, the body is doing it. Okay. But you're not doing it. Oh, that's the distinction. <laughs> it, the, the me exists in, in time. Yes. You know, it's, it's an idea. And mm -hmm. so when I tell a story, like the, I told you this story of this quote, awakening, even though there is not, no one that awakens. Um, uh, in, I love telling stories, but in telling a story, there's a character in the story, right? There's an, a character, an antagonist, protagonist, there's characters in the story, right? So, so that's, where the, that's where the me exists. It's just a character in a story that we're telling. So, so, so you go out and chop wood, then you come back in and say, hey, I just chopped all this wood. You're telling this story. I just chopped all this wood. Yeah. But the chopping of the wood was just occurring. So, so, and yeah, so that's, yeah, so that's the distinction. There's, there's this scene and recognition that the doing is just occurring. You know, in the same way, there's, there's no, now there's there's a recognition that the next step is in every moment and then there's this the dialogue the interpretation that's going on the saying oh i have to do this so i must do this or i did this taking credit for the doing so that's so that that doer is is only an interpretation in in, in the narration so 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 one of the fundamental ways that life shows up for me is that it, it never occurs that there's anything wrong or anything to fix. It's just what's unfolding. So, so, cause the something, the idea that there's something wrong, something wrong is something to fix is only an interpretation in thinking, you know, it's just an idea. So that idea with the recognition, there's no me, there's no, that way of thinking has fallen away. So n nothing's ever seen as, oh, there's something wrong with this and oh, I need to, f it shouldn't be this way. I need to fix this. So um, th that, and then also thoughts. Now, there's, as a result of, of s the recognition of that there is no me, nothing is personal anymore. I mean, there's, a, there's an individual body, of course, there's a me and, you know, I enjoy my relationship with you or, you know, Lisa, you know, and, and so, so there's still the playing uh, of the individual, but, but like the thoughts are no longer seen as my thoughts. The thought, even though they're private and the thoughts that are going through the Norio, through the, across the, backdrop of the norio mind there it, it's to, it, the relationship that that is held with the thoughts are like clouds in the sky you know we 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 don't um when we look up at the clouds 
we never we never t take ownership of it. We never say, oh, that's my cloud. That one over there is my cloud. So so in, in the same way, there's no, what falls away is the idea that these are my thoughts. They are only thoughts. You know, so, and they're as impersonal. I mean, obviously it's different. And the thoughts that I have is based on the conditioning and the, the way in which the world is interpreted, et cetera. It's, um, but they're, nonetheless, it's, they're just thoughts. Not good, bad, right or wrong. And it's, and no more mind than the clouds in the sky are mine. So, so, so the th thinking is still there and it, and, and it's, it's taken its rightful place as what it is and not identified with. You know, there, there is no thinker that is thinking. That's the joke. Yeah. And there's, there's even more to it than that is we were discussing with some difficulty a few minutes ago what steps to suggest others might take. I remember it's been 30 years now since I started uh, a book on non-duality called A Course in Miracles where one of the most confusing things it ever suggested to me was, let's begin by having you forget everything you've ever learned. <laughs> Meaning all your thoughts. Forget about them. They don't apply to where you are sitting right now thinking about who you really are, how you transform from duality to non-duality. And you're saying the same thing using different words, aren't you? That these thoughts are, uh -huh. as our old time teacher Sai Baba would say, all passing clouds, none of them stay with you. Yes, right, exactly. They're, they're like waves, they come and go. Let them return into the silence. <laughs> I mean, you know, not that there's anyone letting anything happen. <laughs> we are the happening too, you know. It's, we are the waves as well. We, this, <laughs> so. Norio, it appears we, we've talked to lots of people over the years who have this awareness of being the infinite being. Uh -huh. And it comes and goes. And they grieve it when it's gone. And they're and and pine for it to come back. It mm -hmm. appears that it sticks with you all the time. Is that correct? I don't know. I mean, the joke is that there's no care whether it's forgotten or not. <laughs> Regardless of whether it's forgotten, forgotten or not, it doesn't make it an actuality. Well, who are you, <laughs> We're not that. <laughs> who are you rubbing shoulders with these days? Do you find people who have gone through similar experiences that you have? You encounter them? Well, that's kind of a trick question. And what I mean by that is that it's, the joke is everybody's already there. But we don't know the joke. <laughs> so, so, and, and yes, I recognize that, that there are people, there are some people who have yet to get the punchline, so to speak. <laughs> so, but, the, the, but I do meet people who, who gotten the punchline, who've seen the joke and, and they share their, they have, they can tell stories and share the stories about their seeing that. And, and we all know that the stories are just stories. It's, yeah. it's, it's just, if anything, it's just a remembering of, of what we always, what we already are and always was and always will be. So it's the identifying which ends it ended the identifying the automatic identifying with something i am this if we listen to how someone is speaking we can understand their interpretation of reality and the way in which many of us are speaking is uh from this place of of me i like when someone says, I have forgotten this, then they're speaking from a place as if that they are separate. They are this something that has for, you know, forgotten. Um, what that points to is that they are caught up in thinking that their thoughts are real, mm. are, are the actual. 
and not just an interpretation. I mean, truly, I mean, the, the funny thing is, see, see, getting the cosmic joke, and you know, I mean, it's like seeing how how could I ever have forgotten or not seen this? It's like now, now I see, now I see the world opposite. Before we think that these these quote spiritual awakening these sensations are the magic to me i see that's not magic at all to me that's a fact the magic is that we could ever forget <laughs> to, to me that to me i think that that's really magical incredibly magical how can how can we ever forget but it, you know so and completely miss it for our entire life Norio, if you had young children today, how could they avoid this forgetting? Uh, well, how would you bring them up? Um, well, one, it's not something we can avoid. <laughs> you know, none of us chose this. It, you know, we're born baby, baby Jody, baby Ted is born. And and they already their being is already in this place as an infant. So um, and then so at no point when you're before you started speaking, before you started learning to speak, you didn't say to your mother and father, "I want to speak Spanish. I don't want to speak English." <laughs> you, you you didn't choose to speak English, right? I'm guessing that you're both born in 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 this country, so you had no choice but to learn to speak English, to speak into language in English, and well, and and so in this same way, how you're speaking, how you learn to speak English, not just speaking English, but the way in which we speak is what's creating this reality so so as a toddler you begin you adopt you begin adopting this reality including the a const the, the identifying with a separate me so the identifying with a separate me doesn't occur until you begin languaging so for many of us uh we have no memories prior to like four or anything because prior to that there's nothing to remember mm -hmm. You know, so, so it's so it's in the so, so in the language, it's the, so, so none of us had any choice but to, to be quote fooled into believing this separate me is me. So it's it's no one's fault, you know. But once, however, <laughs> you know, the joke is once we adopt that separate self identity and and quest and not never, never question as we go through life that that's just an idea fully believing that and navigating the world as oh that is me you know then then you know to me i i consider that the original sin the adopting of this me identity then all the and i and the, the word for me the word sin is not negative to me i i see the word sin as il, synonymous with illusion mm. so so the so the original sin, the original illusion is the me. Once that's adopted and not questioned, then then um, then the way we navigate our world is is supporting this illusion of me, and we do that through attachment. You know, because because the me doesn't really exist. So the only way it can there's a sense of it being real is through what I what I am what I own, mm -hmm. and so so knowledge, ideas, and are the strongest form of attachments. So like a a belief is an attachment to an idea. You know so, and uh, so. You know so in a, in a sense, belief you can say is synonymous with superstition. <laughs> Plain human playing the game of being human like being humans like a game we're here to, and so it, so in order to play a game 
uh, to play Monopoly, we need to have a character. So I, I, if, if, if I would always grab the car when I played Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so the, the physical form and then the, the me identity uh, is, is our game piece. Mm -hmm. um, however, once we're done with the game, I don't keep identifying with the, the car as, as what I am. So, so in this game of, of being human, playing Monopoly, if I lose my car keys, then I go looking for it and search for my car keys. So, so the, the searching, there's nothing wrong with searching. Mm -hmm. It has its place in this game of being human, right? But there's a forgetting of our fundamental nature and now we're using the something which is only applicable in this game of being human to search. It, it's the wrong wrong tool for the for the job, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we can in in using that uh, the uh, co cognitive capacity for searching for something missing, which is one. It's something that you already know what it is, right? Car keys. I know what it looks like. You know, and you know, and and you find it, and and then you found it. Okay, then the search ends. So, <laughs> so using that to search for what am I? <laughs> we'll we'll search forever because it doesn't exist in as an idea or in this realm. Of That's a great analogy. <laughs> And uh, many of us still haven't found our keys. <laughs> well, right. And thank God, because you're not just keys. <laughs> we're not okay. just we're just not a fragment in this game. <laughs> we don't want to we don't want to trade one hat and put on another hat. <laughs> I promise at the outset. My astrologer friend, when he when he was telling me about, he gave me this reading, uh, in, back uh, in two beginning of 2004, um, he told me I, I was going to be giving talks. And I told a friend about it, that I'd be giving talks. And and she's in Asheville, North Carolina. So she said, oh, I can schedule a talk for you. So she scheduled a talk for me March 1st. And this is prior to me knowing what I was going to talk about. <laughs> so, 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 so it's so the funny thing is that once I got oh I need to share this I already had a talk scheduled. <laughs> and what did you tell them? Oh uh, well, well, basically there was nothing to say, you know, because I, you know, so I, I there was nothing to prepare, so I just went in and and there was about twenty people there and uh, and I just uh, said, well, we all have everything we could ever want. There's nothing, nothing ever missing. The only thing that keeps us, prevents us from re recognizing that is who you think you are. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that I, it was so obvious to me, like all the stories and everything that I thought I was and everything, it just was completely gone. I said that and I figured that it would be obvious to them in the same way it was obvious to me. And that all, that's all I had to say and they would see it. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that's great. <laughs> you know, thank you very much. You know, <laughs> thank you. And and I'm looking out at blank faces, and I realize, oh. And then then I remember. Oh wait a minute, here I am, 50 years, and and I miss. It took me 50 years to see this. So <laughs> I had forgotten that 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 I had forgotten it. You know, it's like so so so. So that's when I started looking for a reading. I said, okay, well, I'm, I can't be the only one who's seen this. I wonder if there's any books about this. I wonder if anyone else is talking about this. <laughs> so, I, so I started looking, you know, I went, told a friend about, uh, uh, who lives in Virginia about this. And as I was visiting them and, uh, a few days later, and, they gave me the book uh, Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Well, it's this, and, I, and then I visited my friend Steve Earle who wrote the book Awake at the Wheel. And 
told him about it, and he gave me a book by Krishnamurti. And I said, oh, Krishnamurti, that's right. Stuart told me about Krishnamurti, <laughs> The Awakening of Intelligence. And I read that. And anyway, so, so I just wanted to complete that story. As I said, the human dilemma is we don't know what we are, and we don't know that we don't know. We don't know that we that that is our. Um, there's I describe the human being as like an onion with different layers. You know, in the core core of the onion is the infinite, and then uh, there's infinite and vibration, and then light, and uh, there's the other thing we can we can call the layers dimensions as well we can describe as dimensions so so the in the outer outer layer of the individual human i mean there um there is that's where the intellect ideas concepts are in the outer layer and it's a it's a necessary aspect of being human is to have that layer that's where time is created in that layer. Then, the, then there's the layer beneath that is the feeling layer. And the feeling layer is always present time. Okay, you know, but these layers, I mean, there's the energy flows from the infinite out to the outer layers and out into the world and then back to, you know, it's, a, it's not just one way, it's constantly. So, so, so what is seen is that we're actually recreating the infinite. The infinite's creating us and we're recreating the infinite. So, so, so beneath, the, beneath the feeling layer, which is pres always present time, uh, so time, past, present, future, created out in the outer layer. The next layer is always present time. Then the layer beneath the silence, what, is, what I refer to as the silence, or the layer of resonance. We can, I like the word resonance as well. Like there's a resonance when we get together, that's there, and that's the 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 space of what I call the space of creativity. And there's this resonance, and that is when we get into the deeper layers. Then we trend, there's a transcendence of time, time space. So so we and then the feeling arises from that. Well, the energy arises from that and then moves through the feeling, the body, feeling layer, which then is, is then is interpreted in by the mind in the layer of the mind and so 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 it's energy which is originating where there's no limitations of time time or space when it's seen what our true being is we can know we we can know the entire history of human humanity and every, you know everything so is in is already there within each of us and the thing the thing about languaging is that languaging doesn't occur until we we're, there's a, we relate with one another if someone doesn't if an infant doesn't uh, language until it interacts with other humans it doesn't learn to language the capacity for the human brain to begin to language doesn't occur mm -hmm. and uh we don't, and and because we're caught up in this separate self-identity, we don't see that when we get together, there is this space of creativity, a place, a space, and of resonance there, and 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 so, so what what occurs when, what generally occurs is we have a me identity that has that's incomplete, that's looking for completion. And, and, and of course the joke is that it's always gonna be incomplete because it's only a fragment of an idea. But so, so we immediately using this, this space of creation, which is always there when people get together and we're using it to try to complete the me, which is an impossibility. Mm. You know, so how we relate to each other is always about completing me. You know, so so many of our intimate relationships, there's a lot of manipulating and manipulation, you know, through no fault of anyone's own, you know, that that tends to show up in, in our intimate relationship. So so when it's seen that through the 
getting the cosmic joke that that is. <laughs> I mean, then, then this space of creation remains empty. And and what's possible is is something that in this space of creation, what's possible is to create a world or anything which could never ne could, which could never exist until we get together. That the space of creation doesn't doesn't show up until we get together. And if there's no agenda being inserted into this space, there's something that beyond your my imagination, beyond your imagination, beyond anyone's imagination, beyond what can be conceived of that can be created. And we don't know, we don't, we don't recognize this is a, and this is what I see is the, tr the true meaning of made in the image of God. Well put. You know, so, yeah, so, so it's exciting, you know, to know that we've barely scratched the surface of being human. No, we're just, be we're just still infants. We would like to follow up on this with you later. You're so generous. We're well past the two hour mark already. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with all this digital information, but I'm gonna to try to understand first and then put up on YouTube. But thank you so much for this. Well, well it's an honor to meet you both. And, oh, and, and a per privilege, thank you so much. If you ever get to California, and I suspect that 18 wheeler has been here more than a couple of times, uh, we'd love to keep this relationship alive. Uh, you've got some dear friends and Mana and and Dan, Daniel and uh, yeah. Rose. Yeah, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's, I, I'm really have, I'm, I really appreciate you reaching out to me as well. Feel free to share through us anytime. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. And th thank Lisa for us too. Thank Lisa. No, thank, really, you. thank you so much. Bless you. Much love. Bye-bye. Much love to both of you. And to everybody. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. As we did with part one, here's another selection edited for time, taken from Awake at the Wheel, the book written about Norio Kushi's life by Stephen Earle. The section we're about to include here adds deeper understanding to one of the more important points to Norio's story. It describes a period in 2005 when Norio's expanding awareness, let's call it, was well underway. For the first time, he almost never recognized discontent anymore. He was unperturbed, less content with doing, more with just being. He saw his thoughts as waves originating from the fringes of awareness, and then he began to see his thoughts as if they were outside of him, as in running across a digital screen placed in front of him. Trying to understand this in no way impeded his ability to function, rather it enhanced it. He is filled with gratitude for the simple joy of being alive. While driving his truck through a stretch of the California interstate called the Grapevine, he continued to watch his thoughts. And then something new. He began to notice silent spaces occurring between his thoughts. All this while observing spectacular scenery from the cab of his moving truck. Soon thereafter came Norio's discovery of an even greater silence. These periods of silence now commanded his full attention. Soon all thoughts disappeared. His mind complete silence. Nevertheless, he maintained full control over his truck, acutely tuned to the movements of other highway vehicles. The Norio person's focus of attention then shifted from the act of driving toward the spacious mental void in which all actions occur. And the primary attribute of the mental void? Utter silence. It's all effortless. It isn't required to concentrate, to seek control, or to suppress his thinking. Where the thoughts were coming from and going to, the silence always remained, either as background or as foreground. Thought is temporal and transitory. Silence is timeless and permanent. Silence is now measured in minutes for Norio. It has overtaken his thoughts. Thought is now the exception, silence the rule. The quietude is both empty and full. It is formless, has no content. But at the same time, it is suffused with a presence defying all description. Call it grace, call it equanimity, 
call it unconditional love. These names and more apply, but none is remotely adequate. This is all intimately familiar to Norio. Intuition suggests that he has always known this to be present in him, and next he senses he is at home. By the time he reaches the small town of Visalia, California, Norio's thought has all but ceased, though necessary thoughts that guide him and his giant 18-wheeler into the warehouse dock and make it possible for him to communicate with others come right on cue. But all other thoughts vanish, much as if the plug that feeds energy to the machine that is Norio's mind has been pulled from its socket. His calculating, assessing, and fantasizing mind is at rest. Norio remains in this state of no thought for about two weeks. He doesn't will us to have it. In fact, he has no desire to do so. He is in continuous bliss. He is also awake and aware, noticing things, places, and people such as he never has before. And at night, even when he sleeps, that awareness slips out of its earthly confines and journeys to parts he has no words to identify or describe. During these two weeks, Norio has almost no contact with family or friends. It just doesn't seem necessary. After all, he isn't thinking and has little to say. He feels no urgency to tell anyone anything about what is going on with him, especially since he cannot explain it. Never having any interest in religion or spiritual teachings, Norio has no lexicon of spiritual terms to call upon. Were he familiar with Vedanta, for example, he might call what is happening Samadhi, or familiar with Buddhism, he might call this Enlightenment. But these words mean nothing to him, so they don't come to mind. He is simply resting in reality. The Norio person in his truck is but a vehicle for one perspective on the world. That world is perfect and complete, just as it is. Norio's perspective unique though it may be, is unimportant, without privilege. And in that recognition, there's a sense of sameness with the rest of humanity. The Norio person's sense of self has all but disappeared.